this is the Jericho card to own, in my opinion. What's up, wrestling fans, trading card collectors? Welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Cards. Today, a Q&A episode. We've got a lot of questions coming in. Let's kick it off with Drake's PC. Great guy. Follow him on Instagram, Twitter, all over social media. Question. Thoughts on the 1998 Rock Raw is War Auto? I think it would be sweet to own the first or one of the first Rock auto autograph cards, but they all seem to be in pretty rough shape. I don't know how the Sharpie would hold up over time. They also aren't numbered, and I can't seem to find any production numbers on them. This is a great question, and this is really what this channel is about. These weird kind of questions like this, breaking them down to the best of my ability to help you guys. Specifically with this Rock Auto, uh, you got to be really careful with these. They are fantastic cards. I would recommend going out and picking them up. If you like The Rock, you got to have this card. If you don't really like The Rock, pretty good investment piece as his popularity just keeps going higher and higher. One of the biggest movie stars in the world at this point. To my knowledge, this is the first ever Rock pack pullable autograph on card. In fact, it might be his first actual autograph card unless he was hand signing, you know, the Bumblebee or something like that on in public. As Drake stated in the question, these cards are very condition sensitive with it, the Sharpie on card, because they're using Sharpie and not paint pens or not having a specific area on the card to sign them, just kind of sign them. And the edges are always chipped and worn. A again, anything pre, I guess, 2005, 2006, when Tops took over WWE, and we started seeing Leaf come out. Anything prior to that on wrestling cards, pretty much all the cards are going to be condition sensitive, so just be wary on that. And with these comic images cards in general, they're some of the worst about the chipping and the edge wear. WCW Marketing 91. So actually, you know what, now that I think about it, anything that's got the black border seems to be pretty bad with the chipping and the edge wear. Quality controls, another great question. You know, did the superstars actually sign these? WrestlingTradingCards.com, Tony Velas talked a lot about how some of these cards may be signed by somebody else. Maybe they sent the stack of cards off to somebody to get signed and they were just never returned. We don't have, like Drake said, the question about print runs or numbers or anything like that. Some of these we don't even know if they're authentic. They should be. Most of them are, but some are questionable. Like we've got the Sable one that came out, you know, were those signed by her sister or relative? You know, there's just a lot of questions in to this rock card. If you want to get one of these cards, I wouldn't be too afraid about the Sharpie. I've seen some copies that the Sharpie smudged, kind of wearing off a little bit. Is I wouldn't be too worried about that. Just get it, put it in a one touch or something, and then get it graded and slabbed as fast as possible. But Zane, you're talking about edge wear and chipping. Guys, I'm going to grade any superstar old wrestling cards pre-2002. Don't care about the condition. I'm grading all of those cards, specifically this one, because if you got that Sharpie on there, it's just going to encapsulate it forever, and you don't have to worry about wearing off anymore. Of course, if you're buying it slabbed, you don't got to worry about anything. But let's talk a minute about buying a raw copy. What? So most people are looking for high-end cards of older sets out of fresh cases, fresh boxes. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to be impossible to pull off, you know, pulling this card out of a pack, but go for it if you want. I don't like to break boxes. In fact, I did a recent video you can check out there when I was breaking a Topps Finest box. It, yeah, it was fun, but if you're looking to pull this card out of one of those old sets, be, just be careful. And one reason I say that is because some may be redemption cards. You're not going to get those redeemed. So if you pull a redemption card for a rock auto, or if you pull a redemption for a random auto, whatever it is, like who are you going to send it to? Comic Images, to my knowledge, isn't making cards anymore. This was 20 years ago, so, you know, good luck. Here's the biggest thing about buying this card raw. You know, you see a lot of these raw cards with autographs on them, and you have to question the authenticity. And even on some of these, you want to question the authenticity. But for your best chance of getting a real one from what I've seen on the raw cards from people that have them that are legit, as long as you look at the back of the card and it says, congratulations, you've received an autograph from blah, blah, blah. And it's just a basic silver Sharpie. Even if, you know, the, the, the card has different placement of the autograph, that's fine. As long as it's close and as long as it has that authentication, so to speak, on the back that says, hey, you've got this autograph card, I would personally feel comfortable buying that. So hopefully that answers that question about this Rock Auto card and even the other on-card autos in this Comic Images 98 set. 
The next question is from Manny.Animations on Instagram. Go check him out. His question, what do you know about this card? It looks very rare. Would you buy it if given the opportunity? So for those of you unfamiliar with this Chris Jericho card, it is his first card. We're going to call it a rookie card because you can pull it out of these packs from the CMLL set that Topps produced, I believe in 1993. These packs seem pretty tough to find. Most things pulled out of them are in good condition, so if you want one of these in a higher grade, you've got a pretty good chance. But pulling them may be another story. I don't see a lot of the Jerichos pulled, but this whole set in general, like even the lesser-known wrestlers from CMLL at that time, they still go for quite a bit of money. You know, maybe like 10 15 bucks for commons from what I've seen sold. Specifically with this Jericho card, you just don't see and see these pop up hardly ever. Whether it's slabbed, raw, don't think I've seen any fakes yet, but who knows with this market. In conversing with Manny, I said this card was a unicorn because of the, you know, lack of population. Uh, I've seen them pop up here and there, and when they do, you're talking thousands of dollars. So, Hegel asked later on in the question, would I ever buy this card if I had the opportunity? Absolutely. I love Jericho, especially that early, you know, this time period through his WCW run. Once he got to WWE's Y2J, I mean, I always respect him and I thought he did a great job, but like as a character, I just love that Lionheart character so much more. And who can forget this? One, arm drag. Hold two, arm bar. But yes, this out of all the Chris Jericho cards, I don't even care what AEW's putting out, this is the Jericho card to own, in my opinion. Come on, baby! This next question, kind of a two-parter from Super Snap Ahead on YouTube, which replied to my comments, which, if you guys are liking the show, let me know in the comments. Boxers are so pricey that it's tough to justify as much as I'd like to get one. Base autos can mostly be had for less than $20, so it's even harder to justify. Most of the WWE stars have done too many autos lately, and he, I didn't click on read more, but there's more if you want to go back and look at this comment. And then he later said, they show no sign of slowing down. Maybe they just need to rotate their auto checklist or possibly bring back Legend Series too. 100% agree with these comments that this poster left. And it kind of makes me want to touch on a few things regarding this. The biggest problem, in my opinion, is that WWE is not putting out stars. So let's look back to when these cards were produced and when wrestling was booming. You had, in the 80s, with Topps, and the Wonderama, you had Dusty Rhodes, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Macho Man, Ricky Steamboat, Sting, list goes, Lex Luger, list, list goes on and on. And then the other big boom period, which was the Attitude Era. You had The Rock, Steve Austin, you had Hollywood Hulk Hogan, you had Goldberg, Sting again, Undertaker, and you could just keep listing names on that one as well. These guys were larger than life. They were appearing on TV guides and all over pop culture on TV shows. These were the Michael Jordans of their sport, the Babe Ruths, the Jim Browns of professional wrestling. WWE just doesn't have that right now. I think they have all the star power to do it. I think that some of their physical ability and the talent is maybe the best it's ever been. But, you know, from what we hear, and I'm just a fan, I'm not some dirt sheet, you know, re I don't subscribe to any of that stuff. I don't even like to read wrestling news. Sometimes I just like to watch it as it happens, because that's how I did it as a kid, and that's kind of how I like to do it now. But from what we've heard, like, Vince wants to basically control the narrative, control everything. He owns everything. He wants to make WWE as the focal point and not superstars that transcended the company like they did in those golden eras. Another thing I want to touch on that the commenter talked about was the oversaturation of product. Anybody that's even remotely into modern wrestling, actually, as a matter of fact, if you're into sports cards and you don't even like wrestling... Many times you're picking this stuff on the shelf because there's not anything left on the shelf to rip and you're wanting to rip some packs. I've talked about Finest, Chrome, Transcendent, Undisputed, great sets. I even mentioned Fully Loaded on a recent YouTube Shorts. Hopefully that's going to be a good set. And we like these sets, we like these cards. Price points are okay, Transcendent's a little high, but that's just part of the hobby. But then Topps is constantly putting out these lower-end sets, you know, just their, their base set or their raw uh, money in the banks, uh, Wrestle, Road to WrestleMania, and these just sit on the shelves, rotting away. There's, but as he said, what is in this box that you want? If you hit a big hit, a base auto, 
You can go buy that on eBay for less than the price that you paid for that blaster box to begin with. Even if you found it on clearance, you're probably going to get it cheaper. And I've been saying this for a while now. Whenever WWE puts out a new product, first thing I do is go to Cardboard Connection or anywhere online. There's resources out there. Get that checklist. And then I start going through and finding what do I want? What kind of parallels are there? What kind of numbers are there? Are there autos? Are there dual autos? What is it exactly in this set that I would have any interest in? And I do that because I want to start targeting those on the secondary market because, again, said in this video, said it on past videos, as you guys know, I don't open packs. Well, very rarely ever. Most of the time if I'm doing it, it's going to be for a video like this. But I've done several videos in the past about alternative investments to buying these boxes or buying the products. So if there's an auto I'm looking at and it's, say, $60 on the secondary market out of a new set, so what I'll do is see if I can find that for $60 or less. And then I think to myself, what else could I buy that I would either like more or would appreciate more in value for this same $60? Again, you can go check out those videos there and kind of get that perspective of the way I'm thinking. Also mentioned in this post is the idea of rotating legends into the checklists and having different legends come in and sign at different time periods. I think it's a great idea. I do think that there are some legends in wrestling that sign too much, possibly. And I understand it. They're getting paid to write their name on something. They're going to take it. It's a payday, especially if they're out of the business, not really doing a whole lot anymore. 100% get it. They should keep doing it. We love autographs as fans in general. But, like, let's compare The Undertaker to, say, you know, Jimmy Hart or Demolition. Like, you see a lot of those autographs, they're prevalent. Even Hulk Hogan. So put this in perspective, you know, Michael Jordan's the biggest goat pretty much in sports history. And you don't see a lot, you don't see a lot of signatures coming out with him. He doesn't do a lot of signings. Meanwhile, Hulk Hogan's signing anything and everything, brother. So while we love Hulk Hogan and I like the Hulk Hogan autos and I love collecting them, there's a discrepancy in the pricing because it's just a scarcity factor. And kind of wrapping up this question, I really want to pose this question to you guys as the collectors. So, WWE, Pro Wrestling General, worldwide sport, okay? The NBA has become a worldwide sport at this point. So Topps is putting out all these cards, right? So then let's look at Panini. You know, I talk about basketball. Panini's got the exclusive rights to several sports. So they have all the basketball product, right? So they're putting out all of this basketball product... Basketball fans can't get enough. Sports card breakers can't get enough. Basketball cards flying off the shelves, even if it's hoops or way low absolute, you know, whatever it is on the low end spectrum, people are buying it all up. Yet in this, you know, and it's a proprietor company putting out all that for under one license. WWE tops doing the same thing, but instead wrestling cards are b becoming disgruntled with this and saying, hey, this is just shoving it down our throat. We don't want all of this product. And I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer. I'm just posing the question that if all the basketball fans are buying up their product and it's only put out by one company, why are the wrestling fans not buying all that product put out and, you know, the value of it going up, the interest level going up, even though it's just one company putting that out? Maybe the issue isn't so much the company. Maybe it's wrestling fans and they're just not collecting cards like they are say, t-shirts, or 8x10s, or wrestling figures, or, you know, wrestling Funko Pops, whatever it is, maybe they're just buying that stuff and not buying wrestling cards, which is a whole nother issue. And another thing, yes, I know, wrestling cards compared to basketball, wrestling popularity compared to basketball, not in the same stratosphere, I get that. Of course, I'm hoping to change that perspective with this channel as people get more educated about wrestling cards. But again, let me know in the comments why you think Basketball fans and sports cards fans and breakers are swooping up all the basketball cards. We're seeing record sales. Not so much, do, well, we're seeing record sales of wrestling cards, but it's like vintage stuff of the big stars. We're not seeing shelves just emptied. I've seen some things about people having a hard time getting like the finest set or finding some chrome. But for the most part, you can go to any store and pick this stuff up. And then if you get on the secondary market again, most of the time it's affordable unless it's vintage. Next question is from Chris Jens 25 My other question is, are there any tools outside of eBay to check prices that are free or cheap or any you recommend? 
So you have a few options when it comes to pricing tools. First one is eBay, as he stated. Let's face it, they're the king of the hobby, unfortunately. I know a lot of people don't like a lot of stuff that eBay does, and I get it as well. But their price comps are about as accurate as you can get in a market, putting something out for uh, 99 cents or seeing what a buy it now goes for. And again, I know they're not supplying a lot of that information to you know, third-party sources anymore, but you know, just search what you're looking for, go to filter, sold, completed, see what those are going for. So that's the biggest thing that I can recommend using. When you're looking at those sales on a specific product, say you're looking for a uh, Ric Flair autograph, just the specific one, go back and look at like, uh, see if you can find like five to 10 sales or more. If there's only one or two, a little bit harder to do, but if you have a higher volume sales, just take the average on those and that's about what I would say you should be paying. And then take that knowledge in combination with taxes and fees that you're gonna pay on eBay, any kind of extra charges. Take that information, go to the Facebook groups, go to Twitter, go to Instagram, go to your local card shop, go to local card shows, if they're having local card shows now. I know a lot of people are not having those. Or if you can even find wrestling at local card shows, I don't know. This applies to anything, those sports cards, Marvel cards, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, whatever you're into. Take that information and go out, because a lot of times, once you get the base set of information, a base price that you think something is worth, you can find things outside of that a lot cheaper. There are also several online platforms. Card Ladder is a big one. I don't personally use it. It uh, doesn't mean I don't like the product. Uh, everything I've seen from it looks great. It just seems to be more towards sports cards, and they're not going to have a lot of the wrestling cards I'm into. And it's an additional expense. I'm counting every penny, so that's just me. I'm Frugal McDougal. If you guys need that information, check out Card Ladder, and there's some other software out there too that will feature kind of uh, average prices, kind of manage your collection, how much is your collection worth. There's all kinds of stuff out there on third-party apps and software online platforms, so just start checking. Thanks for checking out today's Q&A video. Hopefully I answered all your questions. If not, let me know in the comments. Leave more questions in the comments. They may be featured in future videos. Thanks for checking out the video. Once again, give me one of these. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.